Okay, quick video of my new abrasive surface grinder. This is an abrasive machine tool, number 3B. A World War II era grinder. It's automatic, but this is a mechanical automatic, not hydraulic automatic. It works pretty well though, so I'm gonna chuck something up and we'll have a grind at it and just kind of watch what happens. This is a rough forge, just kind of test out camp knife. And I am going to start flattening the Ricasso some. So I've got it on the chuck there near the wheel. I'm going to turn the mag switch on. It's on there good and tight. Now I happen to know that this is near the thickness of that knife blade, but I am going to loosen this set screw and crank the grinding head up a little bit. Away from it, just for safety's sake. Then we're gonna locate the surface. <clears throat> the Ricasso. The thickest bit is right about here behind the Ricasso. So we're going to gently lower the grinding head down until it just starts making sparks. This is a big ass grinding wheel on this thing. Set the set screw. I'm gonna take a, a pass or two by hand here. That's a pretty heavy cut. Like 10 or 15 thou. This is a three horsepower spindle and a 12 inch by inch and a half wide wheel. It's really a brute. Now if I want to, see how that says in and that says out, but we want to move the table in, so I pick that with the selector here, and now when I crank this, either left or right, it'll kick over automatically the amount that I have adjusted it to using these bolts under here. One's for the left and one's for the right. See it kicking over? It's set at maximum, maximum kick over per stroke of the table. Or I should say maximum Y feed. So I don't have to keep cranking the Y feed wheel. Pretty cool. 
that's already making it easier to grind than if I had to crank both cranks. It's like halfway to automatic grinding. But now, I'm gonna dial in another uh, 10 thou. Set the, set the tension screw. If you don't do that, the head falls into the work, and that's alarming. So we're gonna change the direction on the handle to out. Now we're gonna engage the automatic feed. This little knob back here, when it's pushed in, it's in slow automatic feed, and when that's pulled out, it's in fast table reciprocation. We'll do both. Fast is pretty fast. Now here's the slow speed. Engage. Oh, gotta pull that off. Oh, it's not running completely off the workpiece at that end, so we'll fix that. I've stopped the table reciprocating for now. I'm going to adjust this dog here a little bit to the right so it runs off the end of the tang like I wanted it to. And now we're gonna go again. That's better. So it feeds fairly quickly from left to right. Even in the, in the slow table feed mode, we're, we're already halfway across the width of our piece. Also, the wheel needs dressed, but I don't have a dresser right now. I've got one on order. We're almost off the piece. Disengage. If this thing is bumping along on the teeth, I found simply bringing it to the other side fixes that. So now I'm going to dial in 5 thou. We're going to take a higher speed pass, just for the heck of it. We're going to switch direction here to table feeding in again. Make sure that's out. We're going to pull it out here for fast operation. And here we go. Pretty fun to watch it work, really. I've got this running off of a VFD at about 55 hertz right now. This is the eighth machine I am running off of that one VFD. And disengage. So that gives a fairly rough finish traveling that fast. got everything cleaned up right about there which is where it begins to matter for the guard so I'm going to take one more 5 thou pass at a slow speed and I'm going to actually adjust this time how much this kicks over so what I need right now is a half inch wrench and I'm going to take that down to about half of how far it was kicking over each stroke just get it a little tight. And the same thing for the other side of the stroke. Oh, we'll attempt to. 
has uh, got some personality, this old machine. I'm still figuring out its quirks. There are no manuals available that I have been able to find. So this has all just been kind of discovering the details as I go. Now we should be set up. Now that we push this in too. We're set up for a slow left and right travel and an intermediate step over between passes. We've made it so that the table needs to come out for us to continue grinding. And we've pushed the selector over to out mode. So we should be good to go. Except for, oh yeah, we gotta dial in five more thou. Right there. Set the set screw. And away we go. Table's traveling slower. And it's not kicking over as far. It'll take a little bit longer to uh, traverse the workpiece. But yeah, this is a cool old girl here. There are several switches, such as this one, which, is, which are no longer operational. They're just electrical artifacts from someone's previous iteration of how to operate this thing. There's another switch that doesn't work. Currently this switch will cut power off, but I'm really operating it with run stop on my VFD remote box here. On the other side of the machine, there are also electrical artifacts. This right here is the current magnetic chuck controller and switch. And it's hooked via this cable up to the current chuck. However, there's also a drum switch here, which no longer does anything. We're running over to that box, which is the old magnetic chuck controller. I also have a, a coolant system here. This is a drain hose for the entire table. I need to find a sump. I've got a coolant pump over there that I can hook up once I get the sump together for wet grinding. Let's go have a look at uh, our progress. We're about halfway across, still going. Now check out under here. That is a big old three horsepower, three phase motor, the original motor. That is belt driving the spindle and also driving the automatic feed mechanism. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it really appears to be in quite good working order. I got this for 550 bucks off of Craigslist in New Jersey. Had to wait a year to get it to sh get it shipped out here. But now it's home and I'm quite happy with it. Um, Looks like we've ground entirely across our workpiece. So I'm gonna stop it and we'll pull it off the chuck and have another look. Disengage. And we'll turn off the VFD. Now we are going to Demagnetify the chuck. And that gave us a finer surface finish than that fast speed work did. Now this is pretty good. So I got I got a precision flat down one side, back behind where the guard will fit up. So now I've got this flat surface I can pop down on the chuck and grind the other side. Alright, well, that's it for now. I'll take another video when I'm doing some Damascus work with it. Thanks for watching.